The last season of Game of Thrones was always going to feature plenty of death, destruction, and chaos, and it certainly didn't disappoint with its penultimate episode, The Bells, which focuses almost entirely on the long-awaited Siege of King's Landing. With the end in sight, the series still has plenty of plots left to conclude, and it moved closer than ever to the end game. With the final episode just a week away, the show is offing major characters left and right. Let's dive into who didn't win the Game of Thrones this time around. Obviously, gigantic spoilers ahead. Lord Varys has been one of the most mysterious figures on Game of Thrones throughout its run. The best gossip in the Seven Kingdoms, Varys quietly pulled the strings in the background for much of the show's eight seasons, even as many of the main characters surrounding him thought they were calling the shots. Until the very end, Varys was consistent and pragmatic about who might be the best ruler of the Seven Kingdoms, and once he found out that Jon Snow had a stronger claim to the Iron Throne than Daenerys Targaryen, he went against the Dragon Queen, knowing that doing so would immediately put himself at risk. In trying to do what was best for the Seven Kingdoms, the spider signs his own death warrant and finds himself at the mercy of Daenerys. Unfortunately for him, she has little to no mercy left to spare, and Varys dies by flame. The latest victim of the word... Dracarys. Game of Thrones has been quietly laying tracks for Daenerys to follow in her unstable father's footsteps for quite some time, but the Dragon Queen's pivot to Mad Queen still seems quite abrupt, even for a woman who's made a habit of burning her enemies. By the beginning of the fifth episode, Daenerys is utterly despondent, having lost two dragons as well as her two closest friends and confidants Jorah Mormont and Masande. She seems to have lost her compass, and she spends some of the episode's earlier moments threatening her queen's hand, Tyrion Lannister, as well as trying to rekindle the romance she had with Jon Snow, before they learned a secret royal lineage makes him a more compelling contender for the throne, as well as the fact that she's his aunt. John, although visibly conflicted, rejects her romantic advances, probably because, well, she's his aunt, a rejection that steals Daenerys for a vengeful path. Even though the bells of King's Landing ring soon after Daenerys' first assault to signal a full surrender to their new queen, she shows no mercy to the city. She sets both soldiers and civilians ablaze in an ugly, horrific move that exhibits the worst of her family's infamous impulses. Without her trusted advisors, Daenerys has run amok, and just to make everything worse, she's massacred thousands of innocents in the process. With so many citizens of King's Landing dying in her assault, Queen Daenerys may not have many people to actually rule when she finally takes whatever's left of the throne. It seems that Varys was right to have backed Jon Snow after all. One of the show's most highly anticipated moments finally arrives in the bells. We're talking, of course, about the long-awaited battle known as Clegane Bowl, the final showdown between the righteous yet savage Sandor Clegane, known as the Hound, and his enormous, zombified older brother, Gregor, known as the Mountain. The two finally meet in the Red Keep as Cersei tries to mount her escape, but neither brother gives a second thought to the Lannister Queen, who casually sidles away as the two finally prepare to face off. The Mountain tosses Cersei's hand Kyburn aside like a rag doll and kills him, and the battle begins. After a brutal fight, during which the Hound realizes he can't simply kill this creature who was once his brother, he tackles him as the building collapses, leading both brothers to fall to their deaths and providing a poignant ending to the Clegane conflict as well as the Hound's character arc. The three remaining Lannisters, Jaime, Tyrion, and Cersei, have spent the show's eight seasons at odds with each other more often than not. But in this episode, members of the Fraught family come back together more than once, helping each other get through the war as best as they can. Before the battle begins, Tyrion frees Jaime from captivity in his own camp, asking Jaime to make sure the bells of surrender ring, and convince Cersei to escape from King's Landing in a dinghy Tyrion has arranged to have waiting in a secret spot on the shore. The two also share a beautifully tender moment when Tyrion tells Jaime that he would never have survived his childhood without him. You were the only one who didn't treat me like a monster. Jaime repays Tyrion for his help, and at his brother's urging, tries to escape with Cersei after he fights and murders Euron Greyjoy, so he can find his way back to her side. But they soon discover there's no way out as the Red Keep collapses above them. The two meet their deaths in each other's arms as the world falls apart around them, proving that no matter what, the Lannisters not only pay their debts, but stick together until the bitter end. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about Game of Thrones are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.